Welcome to Killer Hope, live from Sundance 2011. I'm Christine Vashon, and I'm here today with Greg Araki. Hey, Greg. Hello. How are you doing? So, um, you've been coming to Sundance For almost as long as I've been coming to Sundance. <laughs> we're like the veterans. It's actually uh, Rick Linkletter came to the screen on Friday, and we're like a ball. The vet it's, it's awesome. Just like the same, same old faces. You know what I mean? Like the, in the trenches still. Great. And the first movie you brought here was The Living End? Living End, 1992. Right, and that was the same year I think that I was here with Swoon or Poison? Yeah, I think or... You, yeah Swoon, because Poison was the year before. Right, one, so. right. Like, so new I mean, wave, glory days. Yes. <laughs> the early 90s. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, the festival's changed a lot since then, but in some oh. ways I feel like the, the sort of the core of it hasn't really changed. It's funny, you know, everybody always asks, because I've done so many Sundances now, this is, I think, my eighth one, my eighth film here. And uh, people always ask me, you know, it's how something is so different now when, when you started. You know, as a filmmaker on the inside, it's almost not really different to me. Right. You know what I mean? Because you, it's the same. You have your screenings, your Q and A's. You know, you're excited, um, and you do your press. Right. And, you know, from the inside, I think from the outside, maybe it's mm -hmm. different because it's so much more crowded, so much more media, so much, you know, so much more stuff. And I noticed you have a nice down jacket that has Sundance on it. <laughs> yeah, like more, more corporate sponsorship, <laughs> more, more swag. But the inside, you know, the actual inside as a filmmaker, the excitement of your movie being screened, and you know, the audience reaction, and the press and all that stuff is exactly the same. It's 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 kind of interesting to me. Like that Sundance has gotten so much bigger. Right. But the experience to me is not really that much different as a filmmaker. Well, so tell me about Kaboom. Kaboom is my tenth uh, feature. Wow. Uh, it opens. Uh, it opens in New York next Friday on the 28th of January and LA on the 20 on February 4th. It's also going to be available uh, VOD, which is kind of how IFC Sunday right. selects does their stuff. And we're also doing like 30 uh, cities, like they have like a um, 30 city theatrical uh, commitment stuff. So it's really it's going to be kind of all out, all over there. So it's really I'm so excited about it. It's really uh, well. Tell me cool. about the movie too, though. Uh, not just about what not just about when, it's no, about, when no. you can see it. Yeah. Um, it's a, I do, my one liner for it is it's sort of like a bisexual Twin Peaks in college. <laughs> it has a cult and a mystery and a murder and uh, these sort of omnisexual uh, uh, college kids sort of hooking up in various permutations and um, it's it, it, it's really strange because it, it's like a, it's this really kind of like crazy and wild movie, but I sort of call it's my weirdly my most sort of autobiographical movie I've ever made. <laughs> I mean, the movie's like really kind of lynchian. It all goes in all these sort of crazy directions. There's a sort of um, lesbian character who is being uh, stalked by her le her girlfriend who has like supernatural powers. And, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's all this sort of, sort of graphic novel right, right. aspect to it as well. Um, so it's kind of a crazy movie, but really fun. And uh, it is kind of weirdly based on my my own sort of life as an undergraduate. Uh -huh. The lead character. When you were a lesbian, bisexual, yeah, when a stalker. Yeah, no, because my best friend, uh, she was, it's sort of, the the other character is based on my best friend, but um, the lead character, played by Thomas Decker, is this character named Smith, and he's an undergraduate film studies major. Got it. At a seaside university. I went to UC Santa Barbara. Right. Um, all of those details of his life, and you know, just being an undergraduate, and not knowing what you're gonna do, mm -hmm. and and just it's um, that sense of uh, when you're that age that your whole life is unwritten. You know, yes. you're just a complete question mark. You kind of don't know if you're what your sexuality is, right. what you're going to be, what's going to happen to you. You know, what I mean, like anything can kind of happen to you. Right. And the right. universe of Kaboom is sort of it's this kind of hyper stylized sort of graphic novel influenced world where literally kind of anything can happen. So it, it goes into these sort of fantastical places and stuff. It's really, it's really fun and really awesome. And um, it's my, it was my first film. It premiered in um, Cannes Main Selection. Oh yeah, that's it awesome. My, it was my first film in the Grand, in the Palais, and it was just it, the ride of this movie has been so amazing and incredible. It's just been, it's been really cool. So. Well, now one of the things we are trying to talk about on this show a um, little bit is social media and how it's, you know, where it fits kind um, of in the way you work and um, 
And you know, what, one thing we've been talking about with some filmmakers is, given the way people are now looking at movies, uh -huh. is it actually affecting the stories that you tell? I definitely think so. I mean, it's funny, when I finished the script, um, you know, I read it and I was just like, half this movie is like devices and screens and mm -hmm. computers. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> like right, it's, right. There's a whole major scene where he's like, he has this like chat conversation with this like, mysterious strange. Yeah, I mean, like there's so much of it is like them looking at like. And I have a niece that's 17 and a nephew who's 14, and those kids literally in their devices. Even right. me, like it's literally like right. I gotta like well, I gotta get plugged in and like see, find out what's like. Yeah, you know, it's like it's all about the communication is all about it's constant. Mm -hmm. It's all about devices and all about um, and all about you know messages and and just. You know, just the, everything's all so connected now. Right. And so fast. You know? But are you using things like Twitter or Facebook to actually promote what you do? I'm not. Or? I'm not, I, I'm not Greg Araki's not on Facebook, but I did create a, a Desperate Pictures Facebook page. Uh huh. And it's been really useful for me to sort of like communicate with my fans and, and just sort of um, a lot of screenings people there's a ton of like of course my trademark alternative music and like, some new <laughs> bands and stuff and so you know a lot of times at screenings like who what's on the soundtrack right, and you know, like, right. what are those bands so I like did a full listing of all the songs all the bands and just sort of update as far as you know we're going to be at Sundance and right, when the right. movie's opening and so it's been that's been really awesome I mean the interesting thing to me is you know, I sort of, one of my reasons for making this film is a lot of times when I go um, to film festivals and stuff, um, I'll run into these kids, um, some of whom who are not even old enough to see the Doom Generation or right, when right, they came right. out. But, you know, these, these kids will come up to me like, oh my God, you know, like nowhere, like sort of like got me through like my, my teenage years or my adolescence. And, and, you know, I was, grew up in some horrible place. Yeah, I mean, just right, right, these, right. It, it's really, you know, a movie that, you know, they're they're just like this movie like saved my life kind of you know. And as a filmmaker, that's kind of the highest compliment oh, you, you could ever get. Absolutely. And so I really wanted to make a movie like a kind of cult movie for that kind of audience for sort of the next generation. And so um, that was sort of one of the reasons why I made the movie. And you know, the interesting thing to me is that you know, like some of my earlier films like Doom Generation and Nowhere have had this weird sort of cult following through the years. Right. And I always wonder. How did these kids even ever get hold of this right, movie? Right. You know, I mean, it's like it was, you know, the, you know, the dinosaur of like theatrical, you know, mm -hmm. DVD, or even that in those days VHS. No, back in those days, how we, weren't, wasn't, they... we weren't even sure that our movies would go on no, to VHS. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like how did how did these how did these movies ever trickle down right. to these kids in like Kentucky or Dakota? Yeah, you know I mean, like right. how did they even find out about them? And now, and that was the thing that was ex really exciting for me about this movie is that. Making a movie like this in this new age, with you know Facebook, with all these you know, with the internet, with, there's so much information, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the great things for me about the VOD thing, um, is that you know some kid in Alaska or something can read right. about the movie and see it Friday, you know what I right, mean? And right. the accessibility of that is so exciting to me, you know. I just feel like it really sort of breaks that mold of just like you got to be in New York, San Francisco. That's right. Yeah, I mean you got to be some in near a landmark theater to see right. a movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's so awesome that it's really become so kind of democratic and, and you know and just the word of mouth and the way, you know, things on the internet just like spread so quickly. Right, right. Um, I think that's really amazing. Well, cool. You know, well good luck with Kaboom. Oh, thank you so much. And, you know, um, good luck with this awesome show. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, it's really great. I mean, you know, here's to the next 20. We're still doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We're still, we're, still, we're still plugging on there. We're so. still alive. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you.